Greetings and welcome to the collaboration of four connectional organizations and for the uh, bringing together these wonderful women and men of God to be able to show us our hair, to lead us in discussion for our hair and beyond what that means about our hair, what that means about our hair care and what it means for people of color. We bring together the connectional AME WIM. We bring together, excuse me, let me, for those that do not know what WIM stands for, Women in Ministry. We bring together the Connectional Social Action Commission. We bring together the Connectional Sons of Allen. We bring together the AME International Health Together Commission. And we bring together the court with our queen wearing her crown, one of us, the Howard University Court. We shall come to bring attention to our braids, our cornrows, our locks, our biblical and theological understanding of hair. We will talk about how to have healthy hair. And then we will end with our call to action around the Crown Act. But most of all, we will in the United States, but we will also look to how we can impact in a global way. We have men and women from around the connection this day coming together to talk about our hair, the story, the beauty, and legislation around our crown. And we're gonna take it a step further. So without further ado, let us be led uh, in our pr opening prayer <coughs> and followed by our scripture and biblical understanding led by our president of our Connectional Women in Ministry. Let us pray. God, we come now thanking you for an opportunity to come to celebrate you, come to celebrate our uniqueness through our hair, come to celebrate our crowns, come to celebrate how you bring us together, multiple entities across the AME church and beyond how you bring us together globally, for we are all your children. We thank you, we praise you, we thank you for this collaboration, and we look for many more. Thank you, amen. We'll now have uh, Reverend Dr. Erica Crawford, President of Connection of Women in Ministry, and our um, program will continue as you will find appearing on our slides. Reverend Crawford. Thank you, uh, Supervisor Burnett, and good afternoon, good morning, good evening uh, to all of you. Certainly uh, throughout the course of our lives, many of us, most of us, I suspect all of us have heard things said about our hair. Uh, we have heard people say what the Bible says, and we've heard all kinds of things. We know uh, in the scripture, 1 Timothy 2, 9 and 10 says in like manner that women adorn themselves uh, in modest apparel with shame, fastness and sobriety, not with braided hair or gold and pearls or costly raiment but through good works. We know that the scripture has said to us uh, in other places, but if women have long hair, it is her glory uh, to give for her hair is given to her uh, as a covering. Uh, we know the scripture says to us in 1 Corinthians 11 and 14, does not nature itself teach you that if a man wears long hair, it is a disgrace for him. And uh, 1 Corinthians 11 and 15, but if a woman wears long hair, it is her glory. Or Ezekiel 
44 and 20. They shall not shave their heads and let their locks grow long. They shall surely trim the hair of their head. My brothers and my sisters, there uh, have been uh, times that I suspect most of us have in encountered someone who criticized our hair. They told us what the Bible said to do or not to do. But I want to say to us this morning that God is more concerned about our heart than our hair. Uh, Jesus said the very hairs on our head are numbered, but Jesus didn't say whether we should shave it or lock it or relax it or straighten it or uh, put lye on it. What Jesus says is that they are numbered. In other words, God is concerned about everything, including our hair, but most importantly, God is concerned about our lives. And so today I want to encourage somebody who has lived their life under the guise of what you should and shouldn't do based on somebody else, somebody else's eisegesis or misinterpretation of the scripture. The truth of the matter is my brothers and my sisters, God wants us to look like we are experiencing the joy of God in our lives. There are some things that are culturally different. There are some things that are germane to the area and the time and the context in which they are written. And so don't allow a church or a person or a preacher or a presiding elder or a bishop or an apostle or anybody who says that they are serving in a capacity speaking on behalf of God to shame you, to marginalize you, to ostracize you. Wear your hair in a way that feels good to you and is glorifying to God. Rinse your heart that you might reach heaven, not because of what you look like, but because of how you live. We're excited to have you here. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Heaven smile upon you. Thank you for this opportunity, uh, opportunity Supervisor Burnett. Thank you so very much for that powerful message. We shall continue with our messages coming to us now from um, <clears throat> Brother Monroe Miller, who will um, greet us on behalf of the Sons of Allen. Brother Monroe? Eight, nine from Carthage, seems to be one of the elders there. Brother Miller, Miller, if you will unmute yourself. Thank you for listening to what. Good afternoon are. again. This is, uh, uh, I'm going to greet you today in Jesus' joy and to thank this committee for allowing me this opportunity to be a part of this, uh, be a part of this movement. And I'm looking at the uh, audience and, uh, I see the mostly females, so I feel honored today to be a part of to be a part of this. Uh, and looking at that, if, if going back and think about um, discrimination against hair, it, men was probably the first one and one of the first one that uh, they were discriminated against, because I can remember back in the day uh, when I was working after getting out of the military, I worked in the prison system, and that was one of the things that uh, kind of control men because they were uh, using their hair and using their colors to represent themselves. So hair plays a great important part in our identity. So I want to thank this committee for bringing attention to this Crown Act. And I su fully support it in the Sons for the Sons of Valley. And I want to thank uh, Dr. Marion Burnett, which is who is a spiritual daughter of mine and also uh, like an adopted daughter, because she was my personal uh, physician when I was when we were in the military together. So I want to thank her and this committee for inviting the Sons of Valley to be a part of this movement. Thank you so very much, uh, Brother Miller. We'll now go to um, uh, <clears throat> Reverend. Uh, excuse me, I keep doing that to you, Sister Jackie Dupont Walker, who will then take us into our. Uh, uh, our uh, discussions around uh, the, the Crown Act. Sister Jackie. Good morning. Good morning. I greet you from um, the Pacific Coast, uh, where it is sunny but not warm. Uh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The strength of the Lord is my joy. Uh, the African Methodist Episcopal Church uh, is founded on the principle of standing, even if it has to stand alone for those things that need to be accomplished. 
And so I thank you, Dr. Marion Burnett, Dr. Erica Crawford, and Brother Monroe Romillo for the opportunity for the Social Action Commission to join together in standing against an injustice. I don't know about you, but I remember uh, sitting for my grandmother to braid my hair and it seemed to hurt. And then I remember my grandmother, my mother with a, with a hot comb straightening my hair. And then when I got a chance at age 18 to make a difference for myself, I had the big natural. And my father, the head of a civil rights campaign, told me I looked like a frizzly head chicken. I understood that what he was saying is, I want you to be okay. And in his mind, there were some things that could be protested and that was not a protest that he wanted me to stand on at that moment. While he was trying to protect me, I understand that the spirit of rebellion within me about that and continuing to look like a frizzly head chicken is what we're doing right now. We are continuing in the spirit of all of those who have stood and said women and men uh, that how we look, how God has presented us, we have the opportunity, as Dr. Erica Crawford said, to find our space in that area. So the Social Action Commission stands to resource, stands to support, and definitely kudos to, I call my sister in crime, and I guess to reinterpret that uh, in the language of John Lewis, sister, Reverend Sister uh, Miriam Burnett, who helps me get into good trouble. Uh, today, uh, we have the opportunity to hear from one who understood what the Crown Act could do in freeing up many persons of African descent who had felt a need to cover and change the way they look to be acceptable in society. Um, her name is Holly J. Mitchell, and she had wanted to be with us in person today, but she is currently serving as what we call the president of Los Angeles County. So she's the president of some 10 million people here, and she was called into duty. But Holly Mitchell, who we hear from shortly, is a third generation Angelino. Uh, she is bold, a bold servant leader. She's an activist. Uh, she is someone who saw the needs of black children without a home and adopted a son. Uh, she's a shameless advocate for justice and equality. Uh, when she talks about her spare time, uh, she enjoys sipping a cup of tea in front of an art mural of our very own Rosa Parks, watching the ocean and being mom to Ryan, her son who chose out of what he felt in his home, Benedict College in South Carolina, of uh, where he has graduated. Holly Mitchell, as I mentioned, is currently in the uh, LA County Board of Supervisors. And most people don't realize what that county position is in most counties across this country. Uh, but it, she personally uh, oversees a territory of some 2 million residents and the whole county oversees 10 million. It is currently peopled by all women. All five members of the Board of Supervisors are female and she is one of the, the latest. Before that, she served in the California legislature and it was there in 2019 that she brought forward the Crown Act, creating a respectful and open world for natural hair. It passed without a single nay vote. And you have to understand California is not the land of pro progress. Remember we gave you Ronald Reagan uh, and Arnold Schwarzenegger. So it is not the land of progress. So what, what without a single nay vote, and it was immediately signed into law by Governor, Governor Newsom. Prior to that, she served in the California State Assembly. And prior to that, I just wanna say for younger persons aboard, how she got ready to do what she does now as an elected servant. She was the head of a Crystal Stairs, an organization that tries to provide daycare for low-income families. She headed that for seven years. She had to push and fight and advocate for money before uh, the elected officials testifying, trying to get someone to pay attention. So she was an advocate long before she moved to this room. She worked for former Senator Diane Watson, who herself was a trailblazer, the first and only woman to serve in the Senate. And guess what? Holly Mitchell, when she served, was only the fourth woman in the history of this state to serve in the Senate. She worked as a volunteer as an advocate for the Western Center on Law and Poverty. That's like legal aid, one of our legal aid centers. But I want to lift up that she was the daughter of Sylvia Johnson, 
who was the first warden of the California Institute for Women, the only uh, institute at that time for detaining women in California. I met Holly when she was a young child through her mother. Her mother came un unashamedly to the office of Assemblywoman Maxine Waters and talked about how we were ignoring all of our sisters in prison and we needed to get there to see what was going on. Um, short story, we were soon on a bus headed to Chino, California, the rest is history. Holly Mitchell comes from a home where an advocate was, but more than anything else, she listened, she paid attention, she dedicated herself and now serving as the president of LA County, Holly Mitchell, who initiated, carried forward and got signed the first in the state, first in the state legislature in the US, the Crown Act. I give you in her own words to share what inspired her. County Supervisor, Holly J. Mitchell, my friend and actually my supervisor. Uh, colleagues, uh, I have two goals today in presenting this bill. First, it's to educate perhaps many of you about the uniqueness of black hair and the uniqueness of our texture. And it's to challenge some common held myths about what constitutes professionalism in the workplace. We're gonna do that today through our bill SB 188, the Crown Act, which we hope will create a respectful and open workplace for natural hair. In December of 2018, a 16-year-old young man had his locks violently cut by an official in the middle of a wrestling tournament. Hundreds of thousands of people, and I expect many of us in this very room, watched that video footage. It's visceral, emotional, and devastating for the young man and all who witnessed it. On that day, which I'm sure he and his family will remember for the rest of their lives, the referee, Alan Maloney, gave the child an ultimatum. Lose your hair, and with that, your personal and racial identity and dignity, or lose the match, letting his team, coach, and school down. It was later determined, because that wasn't the first time he's wrestled on behalf of the school, that there is headgear that can be worn that many athletes wear um, to cover their hair. And that referee, for whatever reason, chose to not allow him to wear the headgear and required that his locks, at the moment, be cut without any consultation with his parents. He won the match, but some would argue his personal identity was called into question. That's a situation that no parent would want to force on their child, and certainly no teacher, coach, or mentor ever should. It was shocking for me to witness. And that certainly was not the first time a person of color in America was forced to choose between their racial or ethnic identity and their academic or professional advancement. There are many cases of black employees and applicants denied employment or promotion and even terminated because of either their cornrows, braids, or locks. I have heard heartbreaking reports of young black girls humiliated and sent home from school because their hair was deemed, quote, unruly and a distraction to others. Can we truly say equity exists when our children are denied the right to remain in class and learn because of the characteristics, the natural characteristics of their hair? Where is the justice when black men and women are denied access to economic advancement because of the way they choose to wear their hair? Eurocentric standards of beauty have held the underpinnings of American culture since the founding of our society determining and informing what was acceptable and attractive in the media, academic settings, and at work. So the purpose of SB 188 is to collectively define and protect what we're calling protective hairstyles, braids, locks, or twists, because we should have the right to wear our hair as we choose. The courts in EEOC versus uh, 
Catastrophe Management Solutions, in Rogers versus American Airlines, Inc., in Pitts versus Wild Adventures, Inc., and many other cases have ruled to allow workplace discrimination against any presentation of natural hair that is not an Afro, and Afro is currently a protected category. We are not talking about truly distracting hairstyles. Depends on your perspective. Colored, rainbow colored tresses or pink mohawks. We're speaking of groomed hairstyles like my locks that would, without question, fit an image of professionalism if bias or negative stereotypes were not involved. These supposed race-neutral workplace grooming policies that band, braids, twists, cornrows, or locks may apply to employees or applicants of all races. However, they have a disparate impact on black men and women. This means these policies are far more likely to exclude black individuals from the workplace than people of any other race. Many black employees will tell you if given the chance that the struggle to maintain what society has deemed a professional image while protecting the health and integrity of their hair remains a defining and paradoxical struggle in their work experience, not usually shared by their non-black peers. Black employees should not have to conform to a non-inclusive idea of a professional image at the expense of their personal choice, choice or even the health of their hair. It's 2019, and any law that sanctions a job description that immediately excludes me from a position or anyone else that chooses to wear their hair in its national form, not because of my capacity to do the job, but because of how I choose to wear my hair, is long overdue for reform. I have here with me today Professor Wendy Green from Samford University School of Law in Alabama. We're also joined by a licensed cosmetologist, Akila Hatchfall, who owns a salon here in Sacramento and whose entire clientele are people who choose to wear their hair naturally. Let me say that Wendy is the leading expert on hair discrimination cases and was quoted in the EEOC versus CMS court opinion. I ask that uh, you give them the time allotted to speak and I ask for your I vote on SB 188. We are thankful for the movement that uh, was brought to light by Supervisor Mitchell. We shall now move to uh, a conversation by one of our, 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 our young people. You know, when, um, when I heard and saw the excitement in her parents, when she was crowned Miss Howard University, we all stood with pride as Sister Aisha M. Daniels was crowned Miss Howard University. She shall now come to us with um, words about texturism. After she comes, we're, I'm going to try to get out of the way. Reverend Dr. Betty Schroeder, presiding elder in the 15th Episcopal District will then follow with reflections on hair from a global perspective, followed by Elder Pamela Taylor, a licensed cosmetologist and sister of our executive director of uh, the International Health Commission will come with tips for healthy perm and colored hair, followed by sister Arsintha Butler, who is a licensed cosmetology instructor, talking about tips for healthy, natural hair. And before our call to action, we will have our executive director of the International Health Commission, Reverend Dr. Natalie Mitchell, come with lifestyle choices to promote healthy hair. In that order, thank you so very much. Hello, thank you for that introduction. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I am 
Aisha M. Daniels. I am a graduating senior acting major, playwriting minor from Columbia, South Carolina by way of Liberia, and I proudly serve as the 83rd Miss Howard University. And I'm so excited to be here today, so blessed to be here today to speak about such a relevant subject, especially because I have battled with my own insecurities surrounding hair. And you know, growing up, everybody has so many opinions on Black women and what we do with our hair. It's always a battle. And at home, I was being empowered by my parents to like be my most natural self. And then you go out in the world and specifically in white spaces and you're being ostracized just by existing and just being who you are. And it's always a notion of our hair isn't enough. Or if it's long, it's not curly enough. And if it's not curly, because um, you're wearing your wigs, you're a sellout. And there's always something wrong with Black women making choices about our hair. And the world has a hard time just letting Black women simply exist. And I know we're on a Zoom, but I want to try to get some interaction. I don't want anyone to be shy. So first things first, I hope that a few, a few of you can go to the chat box right now and just tap type if you've been natural before, yes, no, or drop any stigmas that you heard about being natural. I just want to see what everyone has going on in like their culture, their surrounding areas. Like, like do have people sur supported you? You can type it in the chat, enter it. Have people said they prefer your hair one way or the other? Let me know. I'm looking out for some answers in the chat box. Natural, but blow out when you have formal things. Locks for 12 years. Come on, commitment. We love that commitment. <laughs> yes. But these are the important things that we should know and we should be speaking about because um, we have to normalize having conversations about our hair. Currently natural, live in Long Island. Natural for 10 years. I love these answers. I love these. Y'all are y'all are natural for decades. I appreciate that. <laughs> had dreads for 10 years and remained natural beautiful absolutely beautiful and with all these stigmas and all these ways of keeping our hair it's important to also understand how texturism plays a role in all of this so what is texturism so texturism is the idea that only loose or quote-unquote well-defined curls deserve favoring or praise and it manifests in the smallest ways within the natural hair community so charging women with forcey hair above average prices for hairstyles or only complimenting or uplifting young people who have looser hair patterns like 2b 3a and I like to say that texturism is a daughter of racism. And that's why I think it's so, so, so important for us to advocate for the Crown Act and also to just like empower Black youth through representation and education to continue the fight as well. Because within us moving towards freedom and our own liberation and our natural hair movement, it's also important to make sure that we are, of course, like internalizing or continuing to oppress like ourselves as black people so accepting all black textures so i'm going to share my screen to show a video that actually just went viral i want to say one or two days ago maybe you can drop in the chat if you've seen it before but it's the cutest thing in the world so i'm about to share my screen okay so we're gonna watch this video year old has been pulling off her bonnet every night so we started watching this right before bed So that went viral. I think it had over like 4 million views a couple days ago. And I just really wanted to share that video because um, it's 
a show for young children. And I think that not only did they show an array of hairstyles for like those little black girls in there, um, they were also just normalizing something that can be an insecurity for young black children. And I think that we just, as we continue to advocate for the Crown Act, we must continue to advocate for all textures within that and normalize them. So whether you have 2C hair or 3B or 4A or 4C, or you love to wear your hair straight, or you love your you love to wear your wigs and your wigs are laid and melted, or if you like to have your Afro out and you know, it's all okay. And we just wanna make sure that we're highlighting that and pushing forward and teaching children that as well, because representation and education is key as we push forward. And last note, I just wanna say thank you to my parents because they have to, they, they meant a lot in my hair journey. Although my dad doesn't know a lot about hair, um, Bishop Daniels, he doesn't know a lot about hair. He always said, I could never get anything like my hair chemicalized and I didn't understand it, but now I finally appreciate it because I have, I feel so much power and connection to my hair. And I think it's important for us to recognize that as well. And also thank you to my mother, Supervisor Daniels as well for coming with me through my various, various hair journeys. Cause we know we've been through a lot together. And I just want to say thank you for allowing me to come here and speak about it. And if texturism is something new that you haven't heard about, please continue to share it and speak about it because I do think education and representation are key in our liberation and freedom as Black people. So thank you. Thank you so much. Presiding Elder Schroeder. Good evening, um, beloved sisters, queens, and princesses on this platform. Um, please allow me at this point in time to um, greet you in that wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, um, Jesus Christ. Um, I would like to first of all recognize and appreciate each and everyone on the platform and then just share with you that um, the beauty of hair lies um, in its versatility. And because I am not really an expert on this topic, um, but I do like hair. And if you view pictures of mine, you'll see that I um, fluctuate from different levels of doing my hair on, whether it's from a global perspective or an African perspective, I just like playing with my hair. However, the assignment that I was given was to make sure that I find someone within the industry or within um, the GDC that can present to us um, on this particular topic. I have with us um, Sister Johanna Skeyer. She's a licensed um, cosmopolitan, cosmopol cosmetologist and beautician um, and also owns her own hair salon. She is serving on the Episcopal um, WMS for the 15th and uh, so I have invited her with the permission of our coordinator to then um, share with us some thoughts of course within the framework of the time. So with your permission I would just like to yield to her so that she can then present to us. Thank you so much. Ms. Joanna Skayer, if with the permission of the chairperson or, or the moderator, um, you may take the floor. Please, um, Elder. Thank you. She can just unmute and um, come forward and I'll be able to identify her that way. Joanna, you may take the floor. Do you see her? We can't hear you. Johanna, you, you'll have to take off the, the earplugs. We can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. And sit still. All right. Good evening, everybody. Yes. 
Excuse me. Thank you for the opportunity to be part of this program. I'm uh, Didi, mostly we are known as Didi. I'm in this business, in this uh, industry for 25 years, doing hair, natural hair, chemical treated hair, also working with braids, cornrows and locks. Um, in the early 50s, it was, it was used as a community communication medium amongst various African societies that were forced to migrate to America as slaves. Braiding is traditionally a social art. Because of the time it takes, people were often socialized while they have doing the hair. Publical understanding of the hair, what does the Bible say about it? Um, as we know, as we all know, First Corinthians 11, chapter 11, verse 6, says that if a wife will not cover her head, then she should cut her hair. But since it is disgraceful for her to cut her hair or shave her hair, let her cover her head. If we go read, First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 6, 15, etc. We will see that we will find out, we will find and see that God say what God say about the crown. And so we go on with First Timothy chapter 2, verse 9, and so on. How do we have healthy hair? Wash hair more frequently. Use Concentrate or sulfate free shampoos on the scalp. If your hair is oily, wash it often as once a day. If you have chemical treated hair or your hair may be drier, so wash it less frequently. As you got older, your scalp makes less oil, so you may not need to shampoo as often. Choose shampoo and conditioner formulated specifically for your hair type. For example, if, if you have color treated hair, use a color shampoo. If your hair is damaged or chemical, chemically treated, consider a two-in-one shampoo, regardless of the cost. Many shampoo conditioners brands provide the same benefits. Protect hair when swimming. Protect your hair from damaging effects of chlorine by wetting and conditioning your hair before swimming. Wear a tight fitting swimming cap. Use a specifically formulated swimmer's shampoo, deep conditioner after swimming to replace lost moisture, especially for our, us, the Africans, those who are going natural. We have to use especially deep conditioning conditioners and um, leave-in conditioners are very, very good for our African natural hair. Um, is the, uh, what does the, the, uh, the, the law say about Crown Act legislation? Creating a respectful and open word for Natural Hair Act of 2021 or the Crown Act of 2021, this bill prohibits discrimination based on a person's hair texture or hairstyle or texture is commonly associated with particular race or natural, nation, national origin. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. We uh, appreciate that perspective. We'll now hear from um, Elder Taylor. Good afternoon, can everybody hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I'm not gonna be before you long. I'm excited to be here. Um, I'm excited about the freedom of choice that the Crown Act has brought um, to people of color. Um, I've been a hairstylist going on 30 years next year. 
Um, I've been doing this uh, since I was 18, 19 years old, licensed first in North Carolina and now in New Jersey. I currently, and have always worn my hair relaxed. However, my clientele is about 50% natural, 50% chemically relaxed hair. And I am a big proponent about everything in all of that ways, get understanding. You want to have a good understanding of your hair, of what you desire. I think the biggest thing I love is choice, freedom of choice. Um, uh, the young lady said it best, we don't want to be hair bullies, not against texture, not against personal choice and preference. Um, I think the thing I love the most is in this setting, I work in a multicultural salon, and I love that we get an opportunity to discuss our hair, our hair choices, our styles, our textures, and get a good understanding and respect that we all get a chance to have a choice. I have not experienced um, uh, being bullied about my hair because I've always done hair. However, I've experienced that as it as a minister in the church coming in with my orange spiked mohawk and people making an assumption about the message that's going to come forth based upon my hair. And I always tell people it's an inside job. Healthy hair comes from the inside out. Your emotional health, um, the, the key thing I always ask my clients, what's going on in your life? What medications are you taking? Your hair is nourished through your bloodstream. I'm not gonna stay there because my sister, Dr. Mitchum will deal with that, but understand what's going on inside your body is going to affect your hair, your scalp and your skin. Whether you're natural, whether you're chemically treated, you want to make sure that you find out what's going on, your hormones, your period, premenopause, uh, menopause, for men, um, anything going on in your system, what you're eating, what, what you're drinking is going to affect your hair, your scalp, and your skin. Shiny, healthy hair doesn't come from necessarily what you put on your hair. That's a support mechanism. But what is going on inside your stressors, what, what you are, are dealing with, all of those things. Um, I want to say this about chemically treated hair. And then I want to go uh, to a couple other things. And then I will uh, take my seat. Everyone that can do a procedure, may not be very skilled at that procedure. For the ladies that are wearing chemically treated hair, make sure that you have someone who is a good relaxer stylist. You are gonna to have to stay on a schedule. Everything requires scheduling. If you're gonna have natural hair, you still have to stay on a schedule. Just like we need to be pruned in the spirit, like God prunes us back, it's important that you keep your hair trimmed and you prune it for it to grow in a healthy fashion. I find in our community, we can be so afraid we get such a rap as hairstyles that we are just cut happy. That's not what it is. I want to prune it for you so it can grow healthy, so it's strong, so it's well, so it shines. It does you no good to have dead, broken hair, and whether it's natural or chemically relaxed, if I would put a piece of white paper under your hair and place your hair over it, you would be able to see what part of your hair is healthy and the part that needs to be pruned. We have to stop being afraid of that. Not just, an, uh, uh, as I tell people, an end trim, but an inside trim. I call it the jump rope effect. If the handles broke off your jump rope, it would fray all the way up. And that is exactly what happens when you don't prune. So good rule of thumb, if you're wearing chemically treated hair, first make sure you have a good relaxer stylist who understands what you need. You should not be burning. You should not have breakage. You should not have itching. A good healthy scalp is the key. What you put in your body is going to come out on your hair, your scalp, and your skin. If you're taking blood pressure medicine, if your thyroid is off, if your hormones are off, your body system changes every seven to 10 years. The hair you had at 20, you don't have. I can tell you, I don't have the same hair that at almost 50 that I had at 20. Your texture is going to shift and change, which is a beautiful thing. So you have to figure out how to adjust. For my lock clients, for my natural blowout clients, for my natural twist clients, for my relaxed clients, for color, find out. You may have been able to have color treated hair at some point in time. Perhaps your system has changed. Do you Are you allergic to color? There's an agent in, we, let me say this, we have semi-permanent color, which is considered your rinse. That is just gonna stain. That's just gonna, gonna put a little, little something on top of your hair. If you don't have chemically treated hair, a semi-permanent would not be a good choice for you because the cuticle would not be open enough to receive that color staining. Then we have a demi or a demi color, which is for people who have non-chemically treated hair and may have a lot of gray and they want to cover it. But you need to find out if you've never had it. Are you allergic to color? There's an agent called PPD in permanent and demi colors that if you are not able to take that could actually cause your tongue to swell up and close up your throat. You better find out what you can have and what you can't have. Anybody that comes to me, I do not color clients that are not regular clientele. If you're not going to keep a schedule and come back, 
I do not chemically treat clients that I'm going to keep on a schedule. And even my blowout clients, my natural clients, my lot clients, schedule is so important. Make sure you have a professional who's going to take time, who's going to get to know you, who knows your hair, who knows your scalp, who knows your desire, who won't just do something for a dollar, but will tell you from a professional standpoint what is good and not good for you and your hair, how you can keep your scalp healthy. Relaxers should not burn. They should not break your hair off. Color and relaxers don't break your hair off. Poor application, poor management, poor treatment. Perhaps you can't get it. I'm going to let you know if your hair is not healthy enough to receive color, I'm not going to do it. For those who would like to have color, you've never had it. Make sure your stylist will do a patch test on you. That is a test that they would mix up some of this color and place it behind your ear or on your wrist to make sure that you would not have an allergic reaction and end up sick. Everything can be wonderful, but if we don't know how to properly use it, if we're not properly, properly, properly going to someone who's going to take the time to service us in a manner where they'll get to know us, our, our history, our family, our situation, are you stressed out? I have clients that are doing fertility treatment. That's going to change your hair. All of those things have an effect. Your hormone changes, your thyroid, medications, foods, all of those things where you can identify someone that cares about you, a professional that's going to talk to you and find out what's going on in your life to help you make the best decision for you and your hair. So I'm going to say again, it's an inside job. It's an inside job. You always want to sit down with someone. If you're not sure where to go, find someone who you like their look, whether it be natural, whether it be braids, locks, twists, relaxer, Make sure you're having some conversations. Make sure you're willing to be committed to the process. If you're not going to make a commitment, I do not chemically treat. I will not color. And I do not service if you're going to not make a commitment to the process. You've got to stay on the schedule. Understand if you're transitioning out of relaxer into um, natural hair, it's easier for a strand of for oil to go down a straight strand of hair than a curly strand. So no, your hair is going to be dry. So it may take some extra treatment as you are getting rid of that relaxed hair as you are, are transitioning, you're gonna need a lot of treatments and trims and things of that nature to get your hair in a good position so it can be healthy. Whatever you're wearing, whether you choose chemically treated, whether you choose natural, it's all beautiful. We should have the choice to wear whatever we choose to wear, however we choose to wear it, but it's all an inside job. If you don't feel good about you, if you're not healthy from the inside out, if your body is not healthy, if your mind is not healthy, it does not matter what style you choose to wear. A relaxer works for me. I like that I have healthy fit hair my scalp is healthy because I take the time to stay on a schedule and treat it and then I encourage my clients who are natural to keep their hair treated and trimmed and that they are beautiful no matter what the texture no matter what their wave pattern so we all encourage one another I love to see my natural clients and my chemically relaxed clients appreciate that each person chooses to wear what best suits them but I tell you it's an inside job Make sure that you are pruning, you're trimming so it can be healthy. No matter what you have, I don't care if you wear a weave, if you wear protective styles, if your hair is not healthy, you don't want to have to wear something because your hair is messed up. You want to wear it because it's a choice. I don't want to have to wear a weave because my hair is not in a good position or it's broken off. I want to be able to do it because that's my personal choice. If you're balding, I tell people all the time, there are so many things out there. Find out, is it from a medication? Is it something that's genetic? God is faithful. I always tell my clients, pray about everything. God I can do amazing things. But you want to make sure you are consulting with a professional that cares about you, not just your dollar, not just your money, that is grateful that they are, that that you are, that person is grateful you're sewing into their business and they're going to take the time to consult you in a positive fashion and not just do stuff for a dollar, but do what's good for you and respect whatever choice you make on your hair journey. So again, I'm going to say, I'm leaving you with this. It's an inside job. Make sure you're eating the proper foods, that you are drinking plenty of water. If things aren't going well, if your hair is dry, you could put a ton of oil on it. But if that hair is not healthy, it will not shine. The shine, just like in the spiritual, the natural hair shine comes from the inside out. So make sure that you're consulting a proper professional. Just because someone has it on their list of services does not mean that they are, are good at that particular service. Make sure that you have someone. I have clients that are sensitive and I do sectional relaxers to make sure they're not burning. Make sure you're not getting overprocessed. Make sure you're on a schedule. If you're getting your twists or braids or locks or colors, make sure that you are going to someone who's going to give you the best service. So I'll say it again. It's an inside job. 
If you have some issues going on, cue into what you're eating, what medications are you on? Blood, blood pressure medication is a, a rough one on hair. Thyroid medication, if you just had a baby, your hair is gonna totally shift. It could take you a little while to get back to a normal flow. As you get more gray and you have more of a percentage of gray, gray hair has no pigment. It has its own mind. It can become coarse. It can be a whole nother texture than the rest of your hair. It does its own thing, beats to its own drum. You have to make the adjustments for that. It may require more moisture. You may not be able to do the different things. If you're noticing that when you silk your natural hair or you blow it out, that it's frayed all the way up, you need a good trim. You need some pruning. You need a good inside trim. You might need a protein treatment. You might need some more moisture. Whatever you do, make sure that you know that it's an inside job, that when you feel good from the inside, when that body is healthy on the inside, that hair is going to shine. So thank you for your time. God bless you and enjoy whatever journey you choose to take. Amen and thank you. And when Dr. Mitchell comes, you will see that they are truly sisters, <laughs> biological sisters. Woo, we're gonna have to, yeah, okay, all right. Um, we will now hear from Sister Butler. Thank you so very much. We will have Q&A at the end. Uh, please um, begin to put your questions in the chat uh, and we shall um, bring our panelists back so that we can uh, entertain your questions at the end. Sister Butler? I know she's here. She was here. I am here. Okay. Can you hear me? You can you hear me? Yes, we can. Now we can. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm delighted to be here. I'm, and I'm uh, thankful for all the information that's been shared so far. And um, from the last two uh, cosmetology professionals, um, they covered it all. They, they essentially covered it all. So all I have left to share with you would be to reiterate um, what the elder said uh, is that it does come indeed from the inside out as far as your hair. Whatever you take in your body is going to wind up on your hair. Um, I was supposed to speak in terms of um, a lot of the things that they covered, and I don't want to be redundant. Um, what I can share with you are some of the tools that we use in the trade. If you're interested in seeing them, they are part of our culture. And uh, a lot of our younger people are not familiar with these items. Um, I don't see my video, so I don't know that, that you can see it or if it's being shared. But I do have some items here um, that I would like to share with you. Um, we can we can see you uh, if you'd like to for us to see something that's be below you or like on a table. You'll need to tilt your camera down. Okay, can you see it now? No, ma'am. You can't. No, ma'am. Hmm. It's a great shot of you, though. Okay, so I'll hold them up in front of. I'll hold them what? up in front of. Me. <laughs> the first thing I wanted to start with was. Um, the vintage um, um, hot stove, we called it. Can you see that? Are you able to see it? Yes, ma'am. OK, this was one of the early uh, hot stoves that we used for um, pressing the hair. It was given to me by uh, a client who has since passed on. It was one that she used in her beauty salon. And the, the unique thing about this stove is one of the early ones. So it only held one tool at a time. And we have since um, moved up from that. And we've got graduated to the bigger stoves. This is the last model that I used. Um, and you can see the mouth is much wider and we can use more than one tool in it uh, at a time. The tools I'm speaking of would be the pressing cones, starting from the smallest one. This would be for, would have been for our edges. 
and around the nape of our neck, and then they graduate to bigger sizes. I'm amazed that our young people um, don't even know what these are. Um, we would graduate on to uh, the Mar what were known as the Marcel irons. These were the these are the Marcel irons. These were used for pressing and curling our hair. And after we moved from the Marcel irons, we went to what we were, what we call the bumper irons, and they they came in various various sizes from the very small to the very large. Can't, can't get to my large one, but they had some, I can't get to it without bringing my rack down. So, but you have an idea. And now for pressing the hair, they use flat irons. Oop, this is, I didn't take anybody's hair out, trust me. Just some hair caught on it, but. This was a flat iron that we used today. Um, that was do that was in part um, for the pressing and curling service that we used to offer. And some in some salons today, in some very truly natural salons, they're still using them. Moving on, um, as far as the locks go. Um, we have some needles that we use to start the locks or interlock them. We have crochet hooks, very, very tiny crochet hooks, which we use to mat the hair and sometimes correct the locks. And then we have these other tools, the latch hooks that we use for interlocking. Um, let's see, we do braids uh, with and without um, added hair. Uh, the main thing that I would, that I would uh, stress would be to not get your hair braided so tightly as to pull it. Sometimes some braiders are very he heavy handed and they'll pull the hair and we'll wind up, we'll have clients that wind up with um, loss of hair around their edges. That's the biggest thing that, uh, today is when you see people with lots, with uh, lack of edges, it's because the edges have either been overprocessed through perming or they've been um, pulled too tight in, in braiding and we wanna try to avoid that. Um, locks require very little maintenance in my, in my uh, school of thought. They require shampooing, they require some conditioning, uh, retwisting and repairing. The locks I'm wearing, I started this month will be my, I'm in, into my third year. And I started with, um, I guess my hair was about maybe two inches. And this is what it has progressed to. Um, I chose this style because uh, medically I was having an issue uh, because I have to wear um, a sleep mask at night and it was any style that I got uh, that was that was other than natural it was rubbing the back of my hair out to the point to my hair was I actually had some ball areas so my hair has since recovered from that. Uh, since I started, since I took the lock journey and started to do um, natural hair care. And I'm very happy that I did that. And as you can see, my locks are long, they're healthy, and um, I feel good about myself because of, because of that. And I would recommend that to anybody, uh, you know, that has that issue that will want to consider this. Um, that being said, um, as I said, the other women, um, the other professionals, they were very thorough in their presentation. So um, this is what I have to offer you. So be blessed and enjoy your hairstyle.
Thank you so much uh, for all that you are have shared with us uh, this afternoon, this morning, or this evening. Certainly, I've been blessed because we have gone from the continent of Africa um, and uh, across the United States as we are sharing um, today. And so, as you've already heard, I'm here to share with you about lifestyle choices, lifestyle choices for healthy hair. As been covered, a lot of things are impact our, the health of our hair, which I think is very important. And we do understand that we do have choices as the way that we will wear our hair, but we have to understand that our hair is a part of all of our body. And as Dr. Burnett said, uh, you heard my sister, uh, Elder Pamela. Uh, so uh, uh, she did offer a lot of information that was shared here. And I would like to say also that um, Sister Arcynthia, um, Arcynthia Butler, she's my hairdresser. And so we have gone through a lot of different hair uh, styles for me too, from, um, yeah, and now wearing the crocheted hair and my hair is braided underneath. But I can say too, I can understand how, you know, and taking that journey to pick what you're, how you're going to wear your hair, sometimes it, it can be a journey that takes time. But again, if we consider our lifestyle choices, we can promote healthy hair. So as you heard earlier, stress impacts our entire body. Stress can increase the cortisol hormone um, in our body, which can cause hair loss. And so we have to remember this, that there is good stress, like if you're planning a wedding or having a baby, and there's also negative stress. So we can't pray away stress, but we can learn how to manage stress. Can the church say manage stress? That's what you want to do. You want to manage stress. So I offer some suggestions for you. We want to pray, pray and we want to put our faith in action and be patient. Uh, with whatever the situation is going on in our life. It may take time for it to resolve itself. So we want to make sure we put that faith in action so we don't want to have anxiety and worry about it because anxiety and worrying about it, that's negative stress and that's not going to be good for your hair. You want to have a plan A, B, and C and be flexible. So plan A didn't work. How about be, be, plan, be ready for plan B and maybe even plan C. It's important to do that. Accept help and advice from someone else. Seek advice from someone else, not just about your hair, but your life situations. Because again, every decision we make in our life can affect our hair. How about this? You want to laugh more and smile more. Just the, uh, just the action of laughing. Even when you're not even, we, even when there's no, nothing funny around, just the action of laughing just produces positive hormones in your body. So I encourage you to smile more and laugh more. Um, take a walk. It helps you to clear your thinking and get plenty of proper rest and sleep. And also to promote that clear thinking, but to process your thoughts. Many of us, you know, when we get older, you wanna stay up all night long because when you were a kid, they told you to go to bed. But you know, as adults, we need to get proper rest and we need to make sure that uh, we, um, you know, get that seven to eight hours of sleep so that we can promote all health in our entire body. You've heard it all over and over again. Some medications and hormone changes do impact your hair growth. So I'm not encouraging you to stop taking your medication. None of us are encouraging you to do that. We want you to be informed about medications. You've heard about high blood pressure medications, maybe your thyroid medication, your heart medication that you're taking. So be informed. In other words, talk to your doctor because maybe you're thinking that it's something else that's going on and it is the medication and you and your doctor can partner together to go on a healthy journey. Maybe your doctor can recommend less of a dose for you. Maybe it's another type of medication they can offer for you. or maybe. As you make healthy choices regarding your health, maybe one day you can come off of that particular medication as you choose to eat better and become hydrated. Hormonal changes. Hormonal changes, again, as you heard, related to stress and the cortisol levels, menopause, pregnancy, thyroid, or other situations. You wanna be informed about it. And I think that they've educated you well. Um, our body changes over time. But again, if you are informed, because knowledge is power, at least you have the knowledge of what's going on in your body so you can make some choices and make those healthier choices when, in case you can't change your medication, in case you know, you're in menopause and you're going through that right now, but what other things can you do? That's what we wanted to offer to you um, this, with this presentation. Of course, no smoking, everybody. You got, if you smoke, I'm encouraging you to stop smoking. And we know that. Smoking is dangerous to our entire body and even to your hair. And you want to encourage others in your family, you know, for them to take the journey of not smoking. Um, and you want to avoid excess alcohol. All those things we already know, they're not good for the body. And again, they're not good 
for your hair. And I encourage you, there's an organization, the Center for Black Health and Equity, a partner of the International Health Commission. They sponsor No Menthol Sunday. And you can check out that information, sunshine and vitamin D. Sunshine on the scalp and skin is healthful, healthy, and it helps to produce vitamin D in your skin. Now, I'm not talking about sun tanning. I'm not talking about laying out in the sun for hours and hours. You, you don't want to do that. But you do want to take advantage of the nice sunny days that they're out and just naturally while you're walking, our skin has the ability to convert chemicals to promote that vitamin D that's so important for our hair, our skin, our bones and our immune system. And with us still coming out of COVID-19, we wanna make sure that we are getting plenty of sunlight. So healthy food choices and hydration are so important. On the screen there, if you're able to see it, you'll see that I have a picture of a healthy eating plate. This is from the Harvard School of Public Health. I want you to really take a look at that plate because that plate, as you take a look at it, I always like to say that if anybody's heard me do another presentation, I like to share with you that the star of this plate is not meat. The star of this plate are foods that grow from the ground or plant-based foods. So take a look at that. And many times you'll hear your um, cosmetologist or your doctor tell you that you wanna make sure that you get a variety of nutrients to order to support healthy hair follicles and healthy hair. So you wanna get protein in to support the keratin um, in your hair because that's the structure of your hair. You wanna get iron and zinc and vitamin C and the vitamin C helps to support uh, collagen. And collagen we know is important, not just for our hair, but for our nails and for our skin. And then of course there's vitamin E and vitamin A and vitamin D and the B vitamins and biotin. A lot of people you'll hear, they're taking biotin. Well, biotin comes from food, omega-3 fatty acids, and all of these and more, because I'm sure many of you can say, my cosmetologist recommended this or someone else recommended that. But I want you to remember that it all comes from healthy food choices. Sometimes we might have to have nutrient supplements. Um, so you might take a, a biotin tablet or you might take um, some vitamin C and that's all well and good, but it doesn't replace a healthy diet. We always say this when someone tells me I'm exercising so I can eat what I want to, but let me, let me let you know, Fitness or exercise does not outdo a healthy diet and those nutrient supplements, the tablets that you might take, they don't outdo a healthy diet. You, we want to remember this, that God made nutrients, vitamins and minerals and phytonutrients to work together. They work together in synergy. So you may be taking boatloads of vitamin C or this amount of, of zinc and iron and all that's great. But again, vitamins and nutrients, phytonutrients, antioxidants, flavonoids, all of them, they work together. So a healthy diet is what you want to make sure that you're eating because when these nutrients go into your body, they are looking for other nutrients to partner with in order to promote that good health. And if I can borrow it from my sister tag team with her from the inside out, you wanna make sure that you are eating healthy. Then drinking plenty of water. Can't say that enough. We don't want dry hair. And while those nutrients are important to our hair, guess what? Water is important to our hair. And I know you probably never thought about that because, you know, we get into drinking the, the fruity tooty uh, drinks and we get into drinking the soda and the diet soda. But I encourage you, how about a glass of water? And you can put some lemons and limes in it. You can put some basil and mint in it. But again, you want to stay hydrated so that your hair is hydrated and healthy. In the United States of America, we're celebrating National uh, Nutrition Month. And then with National Nutrition Month, it encourages us to eat healthy. And some of us know with that, you want to make sure that you season your foods with herbs and spices instead of salt and animal fat. Now, look again, if you would, with me to that healthy eating chart. I want you to look a little bit closer. I had you staring at it for a second, but I want you to look closer at that chart because this chart gives you an opportunity to really look about look at what we're eating. And so at the top, when it talks about using healthy oils like olive oil and canola oil for your cooking or on your salad or on the table, but limiting butter and avoiding trans fats. Um, then when you go down to the vegetables, encouraging you to eat more vegetables, more foods that grow from the ground, plant-based foods. Um, there are many items coming out in stores that are plant-based. Not everything that everything that's plant-based is not always healthy. You still need to look at the sodium content, the fat, fat content um, in the foods. But you know you do want to eat more foods that grow from the ground. And here's the thing, though. Potatoes and French fries, they're saying doesn't count. Why? Because we've consumed so many potatoes and so many French fries that it has uh, let, not left room for those colorful fruits and vegetables that we want to eat that have those phytonutrients. Some people call them phytochemicals, 
But those phytonutrients that I like to say helps to keep us healthy or helps to fight to keep us healthy. And phyto just means P-H-Y-T-O, that's a Greek word for plant, just means foods that grow from the ground. Then we go down to the fruit, eat plenty of fruits of all colors. That's where you're gonna get in those antioxidants, those flavonoids, the, the polyphenols, all those things that also help to reduce inflammation. That could possibly, again, partner with your doctor, you can find that as you eat healthier, maybe again, you can come off of some of those medications. You can reduce some of those medications. Persons that I've worked with um, within, um, within the AME church, outside the AME church, other clients that I've worked with, they come to me and said, hey, my doctor has said, because I'm eating healthier, I'm able to reduce the medication. I've come off of a medication. My blood pressure is better. My blood, my blood glucose is better. I'm starting to lose weight. All of these things relate to how we eat. Now look at the top corner there, water. It says to drink water and tea and coffee with a little or no sugar. You know, some of you, I know in the morning that coffee, that cup of coffee, you've got six teaspoons of sugar. You wanna, be, you wanna make sure that you get down to as little as possible or maybe none. Limit milk and dairy to one serving a day and juice, a small glass of juice. And let me tell you this, it's better to have the real fruit than to have the fruit juice. Why? Because the real fruit has the fiber in it for you. So you wanna make sure that you are eating the real fruit. And then we wanna make sure the brown uh, area there, getting plenty of whole grains in there. So the whole grain pastas and the whole grain rice. And you wanna limit uh, grains that are like the white whites and the white bread. Why? Because they lack the fiber. And the fiber is so important for your body to help push out toxins, helps with managing your blood sugar. So it's important. Then the area for healthy protein, it says choose fish, poultry, beans, and nuts, but limit red meat, cheese, avoid bacon, cold cuts, and other processed meats. So I wanted to share with you that healthy plate. Why? Because when we make those healthy food choices and we stay properly hydrated, it's important for our hair, but our entire body. With my closing, I'd like to invite you to visit our website at www.abchealth.org to learn more about our online international nutrition program called Culinary Rx. And we have a church gardening farm program, which we are reaching out to churches in order to teach uh, congregations how to grow their own food. Because again, when we eat um, um, food that is healthy for us, it helps to promote good health from the top of our head uh, to the bottom of our feet, if you want to say it that way. But we want to encourage you to make those healthy lifestyle choices so that again, you can promote healthy hair as we all choose to wear our crown and so many different options that we have. And of course, to support our, support, um, our sisters as they choose the ways that they're going to wear their hair, we wanna support one another in this journey. Thank you so much. Thank you so very much. It is uh, a wonderful opportunity for us to come together us and be able to talk about what are our next steps. Sister Jackie DuPont Walker, our director of social action uh, is having internet issues and sent me some bullet points. I am not as eloquent as she is when it comes to speaking about legislation. But let's take it uh, and see what our call to action is. Our call to action is um, a, a step of faith. When we look at what, uh, in particular, the International Health Commission says is our, 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 our responsibility, our responsibility is to let everyone know that uh, faith is an integral part of how we uh, relate to our, not only our physical health, but our mental health, our psychological health, and uh, our mental health. And when we talk about it, you've heard repeatedly now that um, our, our physical health is related to who we are on the inside. Well, but what better way to say who we are on the inside is related to our faith walk. And so with the Crown Act, we are talking about legislation in the US, but let's take it a step further and go beyond that. that we're going to create a respectful and open world for natural hair, but we're gonna go beyond that. We're going to create 
a respectful and open world for hair, however we see fit to wear it ourselves. Now, yes, we need legislation probably all across the globe, but we definitely need it in the United States where it is essential that we be able to be permitted to wear our, our hair naturally, however we see fit in our business settings, in our school settings. Uh, we heard uh, Sister uh, Daniels talk about texturism. However you want to do that is up to us. We've heard Sister Taylor and and um, Elder, excuse me, Elder Taylor and Sister Butler talk about uh, our natural hair, our our pressed hair, our colored hair, our permed hair. And then we had Reverend Dr. Natalie Mitchum come tell us, like her sister, see, you know, when you get two peas in the pod, you, they come out with the same thing. What's in us is what shows up on the outside. That goes for our faith as well as what we are, what we eat is what we used to say that, but I'm gonna start using the new terminology that I just learned today. We have to be sure that we are supporting in the US, supporting HR 216 in the 117th Congress. We have to make sure that in every state, because what is done on the federal level can have implications if it is not carried through in the state level. So let me show you where we are right now. Right now, you can see that uh, there are 14 states that have passed the Crown Act. There are also multiple uh, cities within those states that have passed their own Crown Act. There are states that are pending legislation. It's either filed or pre-filed. There are states all over, look at the purple. These are the states where the legislation was filed but not passed. We need to ensure that we are making an effort to turn those around, put the legislation, because they said no once, doesn't mean they're gonna keep saying no. We need to make sure that uh, a part of our voting rights is to elect people that will embrace us and how we choose to express through our hair. We need to understand that this is not just about women. The Crown Act was initially written by Senator, which the then Senator Holly, because of a brother. We need to understand that it is all of us together. This is gender inclusive. Whether we be male or whether we be fem female, whether we be in the United States, whether we be uh, on the continent of Africa with its um, several, uh, with many countries, whether we be in the Caribbean or South America or in Central America, it doesn't matter where we are. We need to be proactive about ensuring that we are respected, not treated like they are in the Ukraine right now, where our brothers and sisters are told to get to the back of the line. There are many ways that we can be told to get to the back of the line. Our hair is just one example. Beyond our color of our skin, the next place they look is to our hair. We need to make sure that we are creating gender inclusive um, versus gender neutral climates. Gender inclusive, making sure that both the men and the women <coughs> are taken care of. She then says that we have to organize forums and dialogues in our Zion and all our black venues to address our own biases. I can remember being told when I started growing my locks in 2020, in 20, in 2000, no, 2010, in 2010, when I started growing my locks, that I was told not to do that in the church. 12 years later, I still have my locks. We, regardless of where we work and where we play and where we worship, need to be able to do with our hair as long as it is, as, as um, <clears throat> I can't remember which one of our panelists said, is kept. We need to ensure that what we have does not create our own biases and that we don't have unintentional biases 
in our own actions and our own thoughts. So we have to be conscious and, con and uh, conscious models of appreciating our crowns. We have to model what we say. We have to walk the talk. This is only going to be the first of many where we come together <coughs> led by, excuse me, our social action commission and our women in ministry and our sons of Allen and the health commission and anybody else that wants to join us to be able to say, we as the body of Christ, we as the body of the faith community come together and demand that what we want to do <clears throat> and be respected is reflected in our hair, but that is only one piece of the pie. This goes back to voting rights. This goes back to being able to express ourselves in word. This goes back to being able to do all that we need to be in, in order to be whole in Christ and be comfortable within ourselves so we have good stress rather than bad stress and the beauty of our hair will begin and continue to shine brightly. We thank you all for coming. This uh, video will be available on our website, the Health Commission website, <clears throat> the Social Action website, the Women in Ministry website. Uh, it, is going, it is already available on all of our Facebook pl platforms and it will be posted to the Health Commission YouTube channel tomorrow. Uh, look for that, share it with others. This call to action says, speak to your legislators in the US, around the globe that says, speak to each other and respect one another and examine our own biases so that we can move forward together. I'm going to stop sharing now. If there are any questions for any of the panelists, or if there are any, uh, please drop them in the chat. If you can't, if you're on your phone and can't do your chat, feel free at this time to uh, unmute yourself. I am going to check Facebook because we do have folk who are on Facebook now to see if there are any comments there. Reverend Natalie, if you will help me with the chat while I um, look. I sure will. I also wanted to say, um, we, when we presented from the 15th district, can we also share what country that, um, that covers? And I know that we have Reverend Pardue was on earlier uh, from Jamaica. So I just wanna let everybody know, this is an international event that you are experiencing here. And I also think that it's important that, um, as we said, that we take a look at our own biases, because I don't know what it's like for you. You think about getting ready for church or important event, how many of us you've struggled, whether the hair will be straight, whether it will be braided, whether it will be pulled back, um, how, will people, how will people see us? So I think that what you emphasize over and over again is that we need to make sure that we check our own bias, uh, both uh, men and women. You know, sometimes you'll hear someone say, well, I just like straight hair and I just like curly hair and I just like, you know, this color hair and that color hair. But we have to be careful within ourselves that uh, as we greet each other, both men and women, because we want to remember this applies to the men too, that we, you know, we are respecting one another's um, hair uh, choices. So they're putting it in the chat there. And as we're taking a look, does anybody have any questions as you're writing in the chat? We are taking a look. There's one in, there are two in the, uh, on Facebook. One says, please discuss the effects of medication and surgical anesthetic agents on the hair. Will uh, Elder Taylor or Sister Butler uh, take uh, that question for us? Or um, um, I am going to blank on um, the name uh, of, of, of our sister from the 15th. I can take it to whoever or um, any of my, my uh, fellow cosmetologists okay. if you wanna Go take ahead. it. Um, okay. You know, again, uh, anesthesia is a, can definitely be a rough one. I can, I can definitely speak to, um, uh, 
many of my clients who uh, have a couple that have had children, and I'm talking about a couple years out that still are dealing with some of the effects, the transition that your body goes through. Um, I know for a lot of my clients, whether they be chemically treated or um, natural clients, I usually begin to do some treatment processes prior to them getting ready to have surgery. Sometimes you do notice some, um, you know, some shedding, some breaking. Medication is just definitely rough and, and it's got to work its way out of your system. I mean, everything's different. Even that time of the month for you, if you're still a woman who gets your cycle, you know, your hair is different. I can tell if you're a smoker or a non-smoker just by what is happening. So those medications tend to leave film on the hair and it can, it can really cause it to kind of feel just not in a good way. So I would say definitely flushing your system out, as my sister said, with plenty, plenty, plenty of water. Like water is the best thing. If you can flush your system out, making sure you're eating the healthy foods, be patient with yourself. Like be patient with your hair as it is changing, as you're going through various things, especially after babies. If you're doing um, hormone treatments, I have a client who was preparing to want to have another child and those hormone injections are very uh, tough on the hair. Sometimes we have to say that it's worth the sacrifice and we have to figure out some things. We might have to do a little cut. We might have to do a protective style just so we can make it through. I think those are great things. Protective styles are great when you're preparing for a surgery. Be mindful when you come out of those braids or protective styles. If you're a braider, your hair is shedding at least about 150 hairs a day. You're not even noticing it. It's just if you start seeing bunches of hair, that's a place to be concerned. But your hair is going to shed if when you take your braids out, you're going to see a lot of hair because your hair has been shedding into those braids. So when you take them out, do not be mortified by what you see. It's been shedding and it's been caught up inside that hair, you know, just held up in there and not just doing the normal shedding it does. So plenty of water to flush out these anesthesias. Um, I do not recommend that my chemically treated folks get a relaxer uh, right prior to or uh, right after we kind of space it out and do some treatments to prepare the hair to receive again, just so we're not overly, you know, filling it with chemicals. So those are just some things I suggest. I don't know if anyone else has something. So Sister Butler, could you, uh, you could add to that, but also we have a question in there. Thank you, uh, Elder Pam. Uh, we have a question, what about balding? What about no hair? I've gone completely bald and thinning on the sides of your hair. Can you offer something to them, Sister Butler? Um, first of all, <clears throat> excuse me, to uh, speak to the issues of the medication, um, um, we lose the majority of our, our body heat through the top of our heads. And a lot of times um, the medications and so on and so forth, that's where they wind up, especially with the heart medications. Um, and they have different salts and, and other chemicals in those medications that are not, uh, they're, they're not good for our hair. Um, the best that I could could um, advise, along with um, Elder Pam, is that um, you look at the side effects uh, of some of the medications or your prescriptions to see if perhaps that is where it's coming from. Um, with relation to the issue of and and let your let your healthcare provider know that I did have an instance where a blood pressure medication I was taking caused my hair to come out by the handfuls. And I, it was determined that I was allergic to that medication. So they changed it. And when they changed it, um, that went away. That issue went totally away. So it's good to be in um, consultation with your pharmacist and your, 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 um, your uh, physician about that. As far as the balding, um, you have to look at, that person would have to look at um, just a, a history of your hair. When did it start? Is it, a, is, is it a hereditary? Um, uh, is it medication? Is it something you were allergic to? Do you have a thyroid condition? Um, there's a lot to look into a person who has gone completely bald. It, it, just, it just doesn't just happen. There's a reason for it. So make a list and start checking it off and you'll probably find out where it originated and then you'll know where, how you'll be able to treat it if, if at all possible. Thank you for that. For our sister, our cosmetologist from um, Nambia, 
Um, would you would you please answer this question? Uh, they want to know when using a flat iron, which is best, titanium, ceramic, uh, for black hair? Um, I think the ceramic is the best one. Um, here in Africa, we use the the GHD. GHD is the best flat iron you can use because it doesn't have too much heat. And before you use it, please put on a heat protector. This is very important. Heat protector, but you can't even use it daily. If you use it on a, say for instance, on Monday, then you must keep three, four days before you use it again. Because some of the clients are using heat, uh, flat iron daily. It's not healthy. The heat is too much, and it's not really healthy for for the hair. Thank you so much for that, um, Elder Pam. This question is for you. Um, there, uh, there's a young man. His his hair is growing out, and it's very thick and coarse. And his mother can't seem to put enough moisturizer in it. Do you have a recommendation? A good deep conditioner, a leave-in conditioner that might be helpful to her son's hair. Uh, it really depends on um, on texture. Um, I use I don't use too much stuff from the store, so um, I'm trying to think about something that I could recommend that they could just get. Like um, I use a product called Influence, and they have some great natural and you know chemically treated uh, products. Um, I use a moisture lock. It's a particular kind of moisture retainer. Um, you know what if I don't know if that's okay. If, is, is it possible for her to message me to the side or something? Because I'd like to kind of, um, sometimes I like to see things. I think that's a good thing too. A consultation is a wonderful thing. And most places will give you a free consultation. Sometimes it's easier to see something. Um, when I see it and get my hand on it, then I can kind of speak to, you know, when it, what goes best with it. So even like a picture or just a, a little bit more information kind of helps. I don't know if I have another uh, fellow stylist who could give something um, in particular that they've found without seeing it right now. If, well, she's, um, she's if, you, if you, the person, she is, okay. Yeah, she's going to message you directly. Yeah, okay. Does anybody else, any other, my fellow stylists have something that they would recommend offhand? For our sister, uh, jo Johanna, I want, oh, I'm sorry, um, Sister Butler, you were going to say? I would just recommend um, Tresemme or Ultra ultra moisture conditioner and num uh, num that's the first thing I would recommend. The second thing I would recommend is to make sure that the young man is drinking plenty of water. Mm. Good too. Plenty of plain old H2O in his in his diet. He should be drinking a lot of water. And I, I say that just because I don't I don't use I use uh, a particular product from a particular supplier. So I didn't want to say something that someone couldn't get, you know, their hand on. So yeah, yeah that's good. Got you. Yeah. So we have uh, um, a question. Does braiding your hair tight cause you to lose your hair on the sides? And what can you do to grow it back? And then there's a question about the N95 mask that we have to wear. Um, what about breakage from the N95 mask across the top of our hair? I think you said earlier, uh, Sister Butler, that braiding, and each one of you said, don't braid your hair too tight. Yes, yes, um, that's that's one of the um, biggest uh, problems with braiding. Um, tracks, you get traction alopecia, and that's usually on the side, the sides of the hair um, around this portion, that's a very delicate, especially the, the edges, they, they are very, very delicate. That's where you find that, what they call, quote unquote, um, baby hair. It's very delicate. And when you're getting your hair braided, um, some people, and the simplest thing to do would just hold the braid or hold the base to your scalp. Just put your finger at the base so it, do, so it doesn't um, allow too much tension and maybe just have that braided a little more loosely. And you may have to go back to get that touched up from time to time, but um, that's 
that's about the simplest thing you can do. And the other thing is, well, how would I prevent it would be to, um, or how can I, how can I treat it? Um, uh, you could um, just try to stay away from styles that pull, pull back or put a lot of tension um, on your edges and um, watch wearing wigs and caps that have tight bands and stuff, or, you know, around your edges. Uh, as far as uh, as far as treatment, it's just the normal conditioners um, that uh, that I would recommend. Thank you so much, uh, Sister uh, Johanna. Uh, you had mentioned earlier, and I don't know if I, I'm going to say this uh, correctly, but um, you talked about our history there in Africa, you know, going into slavery, of wearing the braids. And I, did you say they were essential for us to wear the braids? Did I hear you correctly? Um, uh, in, the, in the end of this, we, Black people doesn't have songs like nowadays. So um, we could just stay natural with our natural hair. And the first thing uh, we could do was to put on braids. So um, we just do braids and afterwards, from, the, from when the 19th, 90, 2000, then we started with a chemical treated hair where we do relaxing the, the flat irons, the the, the, the keratins and so on. Now we are used to it. I just want to add about this hairline story. So hairline is very sensitive. It's the same of your head. So if you break the head every month, it will break, the hair will just pull out because you have to give it a rest. If you do it in January, just give a rest in February. So you can't do it regularly or frequently because it's a sensitive area of your hair. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So we hear you giving the hair a rest because we do have a question here. Um, she says, I lost, well, she says a comment. I lost my, my hair on my temple 20 years ago after my last child. It came out from the follicles during braiding and won't grow back. So do you have any suggestions? So either any one of our uh, cosmetologists, any suggestions for her? Just understand that once the hair follicle is gone, that's it. The, the hair grows from the follicle and I don't know of any follicles that regenerate or regrow. Um, that's unfortunate, but that's just our biological nature. Once the, that's the nature of the hair. Once the follicle is gone, it's, it, it doesn't come back. Yes, and I think it might okay. There's a way to think, think about the, um, a follicle is that it's the germinating uh, part of your body from which the hair grows. It, yes. it, is, it is the seed itself. And yes. without the seed, there is no hair. Yes. Think of, of, uh, of a plant. If you, if you were to reach down into the ground and pull up a plant by its root yes. and don't leave something for it to possibly regenerate, there yes. is no regeneration. There is no more hair growth. No. So we have to protect the follicles, the seeds, the germinating portion of our scalp, which is why what you all have said about we are what we eat. What's that phrase you do use? Um, inside out. Inside, inside out. out. We have to ensure that our inside <laughs> out is intact so that um, our germinating hair producing cells in our body uh, are protected. Yeah. I'd also like to um, add that um, the question about, uh, that you asked uh, Reverend Natalie about um, our hair and having to braid it uh, during the slavery and post-slavery era, they put 
uh, the designs from the cornrows gave the exit routes. Uh, and so it was essential for communicating without the slave owners knowing it's another means of communicating other than the drum that um, the slave owners didn't understand the language. So we also have to maintain our language and what it means to, to us. Um, there was one other question that was a medical question that now I lost, I can't find it. Well, while you're looking for that, I, you know, we have another question about, you know, losing hair, um, our, our dear sister around her ears, um, and it, it won't grow back. And as we heard, you know, we have, once we lose our hair follicles, we don't know that they're going to come back. But what we do encourage you to do is to continue to nourish your body from the inside out, from the hair that still remains. Uh, proper blood flow to the hair is so important. So what we're eating, making sure that, you know, we don't have high cholesterol, managing our blood pressure, again, getting outside in the sun and some physical activity, staying hydrated. So all those things do play a role. Again, I have found as a registered dietitian, nutritionist, that we compartmentalize our body. We say, well, that's my hair. That's going on with my hair. Well, what was going on with your hair? As we've heard from our licensed cosmetologists, what may be going on with your hair is also going with your heart or your foot, or your kidney, or your lungs. So you want mm -hmm. to make sure that you're addressing your entire body um, when it comes to your hair. Um, I have, uh, here's a question in the chat as we're, when we're gonna be wrapping it up. And, and, and there's, there's a statement in the, okay. there's a statement in the Facebook page that I wanna highlight because it goes back to what I was talking about with cornrows from, the other side of the globe from, uh, from South Africa, the hair texture was the criteria for segregation in apartheid South Africa. Mm. This is a global issue. And this just, that's just one point that uh, confirms that for us, we know it's global, but there are many different uh, manifestations of that. I'd also, before we wrap up, want to talk about um, <clears throat> our, our brothers. I want to ensure that um, our brothers are brought into the conversation on the next go round because our brothers have the same and they're already targeted. Our brothers, um, you know, uh, arrested by, while driving black, killed while driving black, sitting on, on, on the side of the street. Um, our locks do not, our natural hair do, does not make that any uh, easier for our brothers. Um, it's just another way of calling them out. So we need to be, um, uh, um, I'm thankful that Brother uh, Monroe Miller is here representing the Sons of Allen, but he and I have spoken. We are going to be very intentional about including our brothers in the next um, phase of this process so that we are globally addressing men and women um, uh, together. Um, Reverend Natalie, we are 17 minutes over and I'd like to respect time. If you wanna, I'll leave the chat open for a couple of minutes and we can type in our answers if we need to. Sure. And if the cosmetologist would put in, if they don't mind, it's up to them. If you could put in an email or where, how you could be contacted, we understand that personal consultation is important and maybe they can answer some things a general for you and then recommend someone in your area. But if you, uh, again, are cosmetologists, we thank you so much. If you want to put, well, however you could be contacted, place it in the chat so that we do have more questions coming up. And then that way, I do agree with you. We can continue to answer some questions within the chat. It's been such a wonderful, wonderful day. I don't know if Miss Howard University is on. She had a, she had a rehearsal to go to. Okay. Um, I also just put the email address for the health commission in the chat. Uh, if our cosmetologists don't want to put their personal emails in, um, emails can be sent to the info at amec.com. 
health.org and we can uh, get you an answer uh, that way as well. All right. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you all so very much for coming. Um, Reverend Natalie, will you dismiss? Well, actually, uh, Presiding Elder Schroeder, yes, are great. you still with us? Dr. Yes, I'm still with you. Thank you. If you will dismiss us in prayer after we hear back from Brother Miller, I hear you. Yes, sir. Well, I just wanted to thank you all and thank this committee for allowing us to be participate in this movement for the uh, uh, this this revelation that we have with our hair. I want to thank you for inviting the Sons of Allen, and we're behind this fully. Thank you again. Thank you, sir. Uh, Elder, we're in your hands. Amen. Amen. Also, just from our side, let me thank us all for um, this beautiful program. I think this is something that we're going to um, um, replicate on, on our levels and take further because there's so much that I personally have learned today. I do know that um, 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 our, our, our hair is related to your health, but I didn't have the depth. I didn't read up on it. So I was really excited about those presentations and the, um, being reminded that we need to live healthy lifestyles. And I actually now understand why my hair sometimes breaks when I'm a little bit stressed or why it falls out. So thank you very much for that valuable information. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Oh, awesomely awesome, Father God. Father, we come this evening, this afternoon, this morning to thank you that we don't have to be defined by who we are in terms of our hair texture or what type of hair we carry, Father God, by dysfunctions, but that we are your children, Father God, that you have chosen us and that you have made us unique according to your own image, Heavenly Father. Father God, we thank you for women and brothers and sisters, Father God, that have this wisdom that they have shared with us, the knowledge that they've shared with us, Father God. We thank you for young sisters, Father God, that stand and up, Almighty God, in order to bring forth, Father God, what you have given to them as talents, Father God. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can take a stand in removing the negative, Father God, and rebuild our own confidence through what you have created to be Father God. And Father God, we know that it is not every time that we can connect with certain things, but let this platform be a platform and a seed, Father God, that has been planted so that we be confident in who we are and have that self-esteem, Father God, in understanding that who we have created to be is who you want us to be, Father God. And let us re be reminded, Father God, that the health that you have given to us is critical and important, Father God. I come in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God, and I pray for each and every businesswoman, every cosmopolitan, Father God. I pray for each and every one of them, every Black woman who's trying to grow her business, Father God. I speak blessings over their businesses, Father God. I speak blessings over their lives, their children's lives, Father God. And I pray that as they grow in business, Father God, that they would replicate it, Father God, that they would not only be entrepreneurs for themselves, Father God, but that they would multiply and teach others, Father God, that there would be a pool of women, Lord God, that stand up for those ones of us, Father God, who need to appreciate who you have created us to be as black and women of color, Father God. Father God, I declare that we are standing on your promises and that we appreciate this platform and that we will take it further, plant the seed and share it with others in Jesus' name. And as we fellowship, Father God, and as we disunite this evening, this afternoon, this morning, Father God, would you bless our coming in and would you bless our going out? Would you bless everything that we're about to do, Father God? And would you 
cover us under your anointing. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you for the moderator, Father God, and thank you for the initiate, initiative that was taken. Those ones who shared their vision with us, Father God, help us to appreciate one another as women in ministry and as women in general. Thank you, Father God, for those male amongst us that they too could share their experiences and bless us with their presence. Now let us be in your presence, in the peace and understanding, Father God, that surpass all understanding. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you all for coming. I've also added the link to the hair love video. Um, I see that it was requested. The video and presentation for today will be on the Health Commission website as well as our YouTube channel tomorrow the website amechealth.org. It is already going, you know, when you shut down the Facebook, it will um, reboot and be available. It appears to have been shared 12 different times, so you should not have a hard time finding it. Um, thank you again. Uh, and we will um, provide uh, answers to any questions that we receive uh, at a later time. Thank you so very much. Amen. Amen. Blessings. Thank you to all of our panelists.